What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmiston here from Schwartz Edmiston Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at how to add a parallax effect to background images in Squarespace 7.1. You're probably disappointed like I was to find out that it wasn't a feature included in Squarespace 7.1 like it was in 7, but with a little bit of custom code, we can add it very easily to 7.1 templates. example site in Squarespace 7.1. You can see I have my banner images set up, but they are not moving. Um, so it looks pretty good, but it's amazing how much parallax really livens up a site, just adds that extra element. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and figure out how to add the parallax effect to the background images. So to do that, we're gonna be using a JavaScript library called Simple Parallax. It's free and I'm gonna show you guys how to set it up and use it on Squarespace. So if you scroll down the page, they have the implementation instructions. Um, so basically to load the library onto your site, you can use this CDN link. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this whole link. Click Control C and then I'm gonna to go to my custom code section <clears throat> or code injection section on Squarespace. Um, so I'm gonna go to settings, advanced code injection, and that'll take me down to the footer code injection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna load up that script library. Uh, that's the first step that we need to do. If we go back to the instructions, um, the next thing that we have to do is actually initialize the library. So here's some example HTML that they give. So they have this image here and it has a class of thumbnail. And then what they're doing is they're uh, getting that element by its class name, which is thumbnail. And then they're just initializing simple parallax upon that image. And then if you wanna do it with multiple images, then instead of selecting just that one element by its class name, you can select all elements. Uh, and in this case, they would be selecting all images on the site, and then they're initializing simple parallax. So really all we have to do is pass a selector and then initialize it, and we'll be good to go. We'll have parallax on our website. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this because uh, we want it to work with several images. Um, and in this case, we want it to work with all background images on our site. So. I'm gonna go ahead and paste, uh, whoops, I have to open up a script tag because we're adding custom code. Um, so I'm gonna cut that and I'm gonna paste my JavaScript between these script tags. <clears throat> then I'm gonna press Control A and Shift Tab just to clean it up a little bit. Okay, so right now we're passing all image elements to simple parallax. Um, and so we might run into problems if we were to place like an image block, for example, uh, on top of this section, then our images might start getting parallax and things could get really wonky. I haven't tested that out yet. Um, but what we need to do is we need to, instead of selecting all images on the site, we wanna limit this to just images that are background images of index sections, of page sections. Um, uh, we want to limit it to section backgrounds is a better way to say it. So if I right click and click inspect, we can jump in the HTML markup of the page. Uh, and I'll show you guys how we can limit our selector from all images on the site to just background images. So if I toggle open the section, uh, there we have the section background and then we have the content wrapper. So we want to target this section background. And you can see within the section background, we have the image. So instead of selecting all images on the site, we're only gonna select images that are within this section background class. So all I'm gonna do is write dot section background, and now we're only targeting images that are within the section background class. So I'm gonna hit save. And voila, automatically we have parallax on the website. 
Now, if I go down into mobile view, uh, we kind of have some wonky things happening here. Um, and uh, for example, like you can see this section is much taller than the actual image is taking up. Uh, and in these, these uh, images are also not taking up the full height of the section. Um, and so I figured it out by just jumping into the HTML um, and looking at what, uh, what HTML was this uh, parallax library adding. So if I go to section background, there's a simple parallax container that they add. Um, and it just simply wasn't taking up the full height of the section. Like in this case, it's only 267 pixels high and clearly my section is like twice as tall as that. Um, so all I did uh, to fix that problem is I just added some CSS and I'm just gonna add some style tags and we can write our CSS within these style tags. Now, you could add the CSS to the site-wide custom CSS uh, and, and that's perfectly fine. That's another way of doing it. There isn't really a better way. Normally, I'm just really against adding um, CSS to like the header code injection or the footer code injection like this. Um, and that's because I like to keep all of my CSS in one place. But in this case, because we're only going to be adding this one little bit of CSS and uh, it pertains to this uh, parallax library, I like Organization is really the key for me, and uh, I think it makes more sense to keep all of my parallax code that I'm adding to the site in one place. So that's why I'm adding it inline here in the footer code injection as, a, as opposed to adding you know, this one little snippet to my custom CSS code injection, which could get lost in the shuffle. Um, so organization is my number one priority, which is why I'm adding it right here in these style tags. So, <clears throat> Again, um, all we have to do is change that simple parallax container's height to 100%. So I just have to grab the class name of that container and then change its height. So let me toggle this open and find that container again. Okay, so the class name is simple parallax. I'm gonna copy that. We target classes with a period. I'm gonna open up some curly brackets um, and then height. 100% and then close my curly brackets. And now when I save this, my images now take up the full height of the section. So cool. Um, so now we have a parallax on Squarespace 7.1. Very cool, very easy to install. This is literally all you need just to get started. Um, and all background images on the site will now have parallax enabled. Now, uh, if you look at the documentation, they give you some settings that you can have control over. Um, so for example, you can change the orientation that the image um, is parallaxing in. So for example, you could change it to right and your images would parallax from left to right instead of uh, up and down. Um, but I don't see a lot of use cases for that because the tr traditional parallax is, you know, a vertical parallax. Um, so that's not something that you would really have to mess with. Scale is uh, how much parallax, how much the image sort of moves up and down. Um, so let's actually look at how to change some of these settings because it's something that you might need to do and there's a little bit of a, a setup that you need to do <clears throat> in order to add these settings. So here's an example of them, you know, adding some instructions to the code that we already have. So let me go back to the code. <clears throat> okay, so if we look at their example, um, so they have their uh, images and then they're gonna, all they do is add a comma and then open up some curly brackets and then down below, they close the curly brackets. And so in here, this is where we can write all of our you know, special instructions per their documentation uh, uh, of anything that we wanna change out of uh, all these things that can be changed. So again, the, uh, the only ones that I think you're gonna need to use are the scale and the delay. Uh, and I like the defaults, so I don't even necessarily use them, but I, these are the two that you're gonna wanna look at. So let's talk about scale first. So the default is 
Um, so let's change it to something higher and you'll see how scale uh, affects things. So let's change the scale to two. Yeah, let's just do two. And I'll save that. <clears throat> so what scale does is it, change, it changes the amount that the image is parallaxing. And the way that it does it is it's zooming in the image so that uh, there's more image sticking above and below the container so that there's more real estate essentially to move the image up and down. So the downside of scale is that you're zooming in the image so you're losing quality, but the benefit of scale is that you get a, a more extreme parallax effect. So you can see we get a little bit of that grain because the image is being um, increased in size but it, there's a more extreme parallax effect. So that's why you might wanna play with scale. Again, the default is 1.2. You might wanna push it to something like 1.5 where you have a more extreme parallax, but you're not losing so much image quality. Um, and that's a nice little effect. 1.5 looks pretty good, but again, um, the default is 1.2 and I think that works fine for me. So then the other setting that uh, you might wanna play with is the delay. Uh, and this is written in seconds. So the default is 0.4 seconds. And this is basically the amount of time that it takes the image to complete its journey from the top of the container to the bottom of the container. So basically it's the duration that the image is parallaxing over. So, <clears throat> um, if I change the delay to, remember this is in seconds, so if I change the delay to two and click save, it's gonna take a really long time after you scroll for the image to finish its parallax. So you can see it's like, here I'm done scrolling and then the image is still moving because it's a two second duration for that parallax now. So two seconds is very extreme. You probably would not want it that high, but you might want it you know, higher than 0.4 seconds. Um, it kind of gives it like a more, I don't know, a smoother feel sort of, but it's just all preference. So it's kind of a cool effect how it, you know, after the person is done scrolling, there's like, there's just that delay where it, it, it keeps, the image keeps moving. Um, so those are the two properties that you might end up wanting to change. But other than that, um, I don't think you'll really have to play with any of the other properties. In my just little stort, short stint using it, um, those are the only two properties that I've really played with. But again, as I said before, the defaults are actually pretty good. So you probably won't even have to mess with these at all. All right, guys, that is it for this tutorial. I'm gonna have this code and this CSS in the description below. So you can check out the blog post in the description and just go ahead and copy and paste this into your website. And this will work on every 7.1 template because the cool thing about 7.1 is all the template CS or HTML and, and code is the same now. So you can just copy and paste this onto your site and you're ready to go. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel. I'm really pushing to try and get to 1,000 before the end of the year. I appreciate you guys. If you did like this video, go ahead and give it, give it a thumbs up too. Uh, just thank you guys so much for checking it out, uh, and I'll see you in the next one.